a lot of people think that English is the official language of the United States, but in fact, there is no official language in the United States. There is no policy, singular policy or law that states that English is the official language, uh, which is an interesting thing because, well, most people would, would guess if they had to that English is the official language, but in fact, it is not. Um, there are many different languages spoken in the U.S., and that's reflective of all the different kind of uh, ethnic and cultural groups that live in the United States. Um, depending on where you live in the States, this is more prevalent than in other places. For example, in Los Angeles, where I like to say I'm from, um, the diversity of languages is enormous. And in fact, there are very strong, what are called ethnic enclaves, uh, in which huge groups of people from certain ethnic groups live, and largely uh, the language that is spoken by those groups is the dominant language within that particular uh, speech community. For example, if you go to Chinatown in LA, you will see on all the signs, and you will hear in the streets people speaking probably Mandarin Chinese or perhaps Cantonese. Uh, if you go to Koreatown, you will see signs and businesses with uh, their logos written in Korean with people speaking Korean. Um, if you go to little Ethiopia, you will encounter, well, probably more uh, English in that particular enclave. But um, And then, well, especially in Los Angeles, but all over California and in many other states in the United States. Uh, Spanish is widely, widely spoken. Uh, I believe that either in Los Angeles or in California as a whole, uh, there is something like 50% of the population is uh, native Spanish speakers. So there is a plethora of linguistic representation and diversity within uh, the United States and there is no official language. However, um, despite that, English, I would say, remains by far the hegemonic kind of language that is the language of prestige and the language of power within the country. Um, and there are certain policies, ironically, despite there being not an officially government-endorsed language of the country, there are language policies regarding the use of English uh, in places like schools and workplaces and other sorts of um, social spheres. And this is kind of a source of a lot of controversy, uh, which gets politically kind of heated in a lot of different uh, kind of discussions of the matter. For example, in the state of Arizona, which is where I went to graduate school, um, there are laws related to language policies in schools. And at one point, there were several teachers who were fired from their jobs uh, because they were not Eng native speakers of English. Now, I'm an English language teacher, and I can say that, that without a doubt, there are many, many um, advantages to being a non-native speaker teacher of English as compared with a native speaker teacher. Both have different kind of um, advantages. And to me, th personally, I feel that this kind of policy is absolutely inappropriate, uh, especially for language teaching. But uh, I'm just saying that these policies exist. And uh, it's interesting that they do, because we don't have an official language. Um, so. Several factors influence the use of English and the, the kind of popularity of English and I would say the, the power of English in the United States and that's partially uh, a result of history just because the United States was colonized by uh, Europeans, you know, several hundred years ago and that lasting legacy has left us with sort of uh, English as our pseudo official language. Um, but also, and perhaps equally as importantly, like in the age of globalization and modernity, uh, English has become the language of international communication for 
for the most part. Um, so that kind of reinforces it and the role of kind of technology and uh, different uh, possibilities related to mobility and traveling and technology all sort of reinforce the position and status of English in the United States. Foreign languages are kind of a funny thing in the United States as compared to a country like, well, let's say any country in Europe where foreign languages are spoken by almost everybody and it's like the norm. In the United States, a lot of people do speak a second language or they are already a second language speaker and they learn English as a second language, for example. Um, some of the probably more common languages that people study and learn in the United States would be uh, Spanish and French and possibly, I would say, Chinese. Um, but when you enter a university or in high school, it's kind of like, it's more of an individual choice rather than uh, a requirement a lot of the time. So students will choose, to tra uh, will choose to study French or they might choose to study Italian. Uh, a lot of romance languages actually. So I'd say a smaller group of people study like Eastern Asian languages like Chinese or Korean or Japanese, something like that. Um, in my opinion, I think that it's really valuable to learn languages that are spoken widely across the world or languages that are used widely in different aspects of business and um, international kinds of relations, such as Spanish. I mean, if you study Spanish, you can travel throughout all of Central and South America, just about, and kind of it, op it opens up a, a lot of opportunities for you, not just for travel, but for possibly for work as well. Um, well, I mentioned Chinese before, and just speaking uh, of sheer numbers, uh, there are more Chinese people speaking Chinese and living in the world than, than any other group of people. So I would recommend people to study Chinese if they can especially starting at a young age, because that will make it a lot easier for them to get started and then continue as they grow up. Um, I studied Portuguese and Spanish, so I value that experience uh, immensely in, in my daily life too. I mean, I work in Colombia, which is a Spanish-speaking country, so I can use the Spanish that I studied here in my work. And also, I work with some Brazilian people, and I get to use Portuguese on a pretty regular basis there. Uh, and I just really enjoy it. I think it's a personally fulfilling uh, activity to study languages.